Hey, what's up, everyone? GamerGuy7 Ace is here. You miss me? I miss you guys too. It's been over a month since I've done a video, as I needed some time off my channel. Now that I'm back, I've been wanting to do another top 5 for a long time now. My first top 5 was back in 2015 when I did my top 5 Dimp Sonic games, which was new and different. Given the fact that nobody has ever done a top 5 on Dimp's only Sonic games. Top 5 lists aren't anything new, but I wanted to wait until after the release of Sonic Mania and Forces to make my official list. And in this video, we're starting with Sonic soundtracks. Since the very beginning, Sonic has always been recognized for his awesome music, no matter what quality the game is. Most of his games have great soundtracks. Now, there are a few exceptions like Sonic Chronicles or The Dark Brotherhood. <laughs> Yeah, who can forget that? And there have been some lackluster soundtracks, as no gaming franchise is perfect. But overall, this series has been stellar in the music department, even more than Mario, especially the classic and modern era in my opinion. Oh, and speaking of opinions, this top 5 video is going to be my most opinionated list, since music is very subjective and we all have our own different tastes or genres. Some people prefer the butt rock of Sonic music, while others prefer the hip hop or jazzy beats, the orchestrated musical scores, and etc. Nevertheless, these are all my opinions, so there shouldn't be any butt hurt or salt in the comments. And remember, you can always grab a Snickers. Furthermore, this list will only feature my favorite original soundtracks in the franchise, not specific tracks or even vocal tracks. I had to narrow this list down because since a lot of Sonic games have at least one good soundtrack, this list would be huge. But alright, with that out of the way, let's start with number 5 on my list. Sonic CD The Japanese soundtrack. I have to say, out of all the classic Sonic games, this one had the most unique music. Even the US soundtrack did. Unfortunately, many of us never got to experience the Japanese soundtrack until much later in 2011 when a young man named Christian Whitehead remade the game, which gave the player the option to play with the US or Japanese soundtracks. And the Japanese track outshines the US version in every single way, it's not even funny. While the US version went for a more ambient, dark, and rock based vibe, the Japanese version went full blown 90s camp, as the style of music was heavily based on a genre called New Jack Swing. For those of you who do not know, New Jack Swing or Swing Beat was a mid 80s and 90s fusion genre spearheaded by Teddy Riley and Bernard Bell, both of whom worked with Michael Jackson as his musicians. Bernard himself was known for being a songwriter to Michael Jackson and Whitney Houston. So no wonder the genre got its nickname, New Jack Swing. We all tend to give credit to Sonic 3 for having MJ's musical influence, but that actually began in Sonic CD. Only difference was none of Michael's musicians worked on this game soundtrack. My favorite tracks in this game are definitely Quartz Quadrant and the popular Stardust Speedway, with the best being the future and good future of Stardust Speedway and the present of Quartz Quadrant. The music just makes you want to dance in a nightclub and is a very upbeat and lively soundtrack. Now, after all these positives I just mentioned, why is it all the way down to number 5 on my list? Well, that's because the other soundtracks are just better to me. And Sonic CD's music, as much as I love it, is a bit dated with his 90s music. Matter of fact, the other classic Sonic game soundtracks sound more timeless than CD. But besides that, and the past soundtracks of the game which I wasn't that fond of, the game's music is solid in my book. Alright, next on the music list. Number 4 is Sonic 3 & Knuckles. Oh yeah, I bet some of you are surprised that this isn't further up, or even number 1 on my list. That's because music to me isn't necessarily correlated with how great the game is. It can be a huge factor, but then I would be biased to put this so high just because I love it so much. Now, what have I not said about Sonic 3's soundtrack that I haven't already said in previous videos? You can also check my editorial video on Sonic 3 vs Sonic Mania if you want to know more. But yes, I loved this game soundtrack and it was hard to choose between this and Sonic CD. But I concluded that I find myself replaying and listening to Sonic 3's soundtrack far more than Sonic CD. True, Sonic CD's music was inspired by New Jack Swing, but Sonic 3 literally had Michael Jackson and his musicians working on the soundtrack. 
And to the people who are still doubtful about this, a lot of MJ's musicians worked on this game. Brad Buxer, Sirocco Jones, Bobby Brooks, Howard Drawson, and etc. So even though Michael himself wasn't as involved in the making of this game, his musicians were definitely involved. I don't need to get into the details of why Michael wasn't that involved as there are tons of documentaries and vids about the history of Sonic 3. All I will say is that MJ's squad were mostly involved in the making of the first half, Sonic 3, while Sonic and Knuckles didn't really have any of MJ's influence in the music. Sonic and Knuckles still had awesome tracks like Flying Battery, Mushroom Hill, and Sky Sanctuary Zone, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't love the first half more. From Angel Island to Hydro City to Ice Cap, Lounge Bay Zone, there's hardly a track in this game that I hate. Hydro City Zone, though, is arguably the greatest soundtrack of Classic Sonic and one of the greatest Sonic tracks of all time. This was the first game that remixed their second acts, so every act of a zone had different music, which just provided more variety than Sonic 1 and 2. And did you guys also know that Sonic 3 was John Sinawa's debut as a musician, as this was his first major gig? He was only 24 and he got to work with Michael Jackson and his musicians. Jun would later be responsible for most of the Sonic music in the future, especially when he formed the band Crush 40. I may not be a huge fan of the band or his work on Sonic 4's soundtrack, but there's no denying that Jun is talented and learned from the best. Alright, time for the top 3 Sonic soundtracks. And what do I have as the third on this list? Sonic Unleashed. This list keeps getting weirder, huh? Not quite, because Unleashed was the first 3D Sonic game where the music took a focal point and really grabbed my attention. And I'm not talking about the vocal tracks, I'm talking about everything else, including the orchestral music. I think this may be the first Sonic game to utilize a live symphony for the theme song. I don't know what made Sega take this new direction, but I assumed it was because of the success of Super Mario Galaxy that came the year before in 2007. That game soundtrack was heavily orchestrated music, and Sonic Unleashed came out just a year later in 2008. But let's not forget about the elephant in the room, the music for the Werehog. Definitely one of the most unique and dare I say sexy soundtracks in the Sonic game. Jazz was a huge theme for the entire game, even the daytime stages had a bit of that influence, although it leaned more closely to fast-paced rock and jazz electronica. One of my favorite daytime stage tracks was Rooftop Run, Windmill Isle, and Skyscraper Scamper, and nighttime stages was Windmill Isle, Dragon Road, Jungle Joyride, Cool Edge, and many more. The Hub World tracks were also very engaging to listen to, as each location had its own cultural music. From the French accordions of Spagonia, to the Congo drum beats of Missouri, to the Chinese guzing of Shunan, to the soul harmonica of Empire City, Sonic Unleashed had the most diverse soundtrack of any Sonic game, and that's just a fact. Many times it sounded like Sonic Unleashed OST belonged in the Disney Pixar film. That's how timeless the music in this game is, and honestly it trumps a lot of the classic era soundtracks. Not because 3D Sonic is better, but because I love real music and Unleashed is a prime example of that. Sonic Team actually had to do some research of different locations and landscapes and music when they were making the soundtrack of this game. So it was really a world adventure for them. I feel this game's music should be taught at school in music appreciation classes for the cultural diversity. The main negative of the music I have though is the annoying battle theme in the Werehog stages. It plays every time Sonic has to fight the Gaia creatures which makes up majority of the stage, so you barely get a chance to fully enjoy the soundtrack. That's a huge flaw in the game's design and just a further push to either buy the soundtrack or listen to it on YouTube. The vocal track song is also one of my favorite. Endless Possibilities from Bowling for Soup was a huge guilty pleasure for me back then and a nice break of pace from the overuse of Crush 40. But as far as vocal tracks go, I kinda like Fist Bump from Sonic Forces a little more, mainly for the guitar riff. Now as much as I praise this game soundtrack, the other two games on this list do it slightly better for me. For number two, I have to go with Sonic Colors. Oh yes, this one was also a hard choice to pick over Sonic Unleashed because Unleashed just has great variety. Colors on the other hand is pure Sonic whimsiness and I love that. This game had the most different and quirky tracks 
that I find myself listening to every month. The best part about this is there's a reasoning behind it. The music of Sonic Colors was intended to be more energetic and wacky than previous titles. In an interview, Izuka said, since the game has an amusement park setting in a more fantastical visual style, they're trying to expand the usual cool Sonic sound and focus on making fun up-tempo music that will really get players blood pumping. And being a game mostly set in outer space, the music had to be very unconventional compared to more cultural tracks of Sonic Unleashed. My favorite tracks in the games are from Sweet Mountain, especially Act 2, Starlight Carnival, Asteroid Coaster, Aquarium Park, and of course, the beautiful music of Planet Wisp. This is also the first Sonic game that utilizes the piano in the best way. Planet Wisp and Aquarium Park being great examples. And being a piano guy myself, who's played the instrument for 20 years, this is something I really appreciate. There's not as much tracks in this game as there are in Unleashed, especially since Colors is a shorter game, but what is in here is very enjoyable. And in this list, I go for what I listen to the most and what I hum to myself the most after I'm done listening. There aren't hub worlds in this game, but the hub menu music has some beautiful tracks too. It's a damn shame that majority of players don't listen to the whole thing since it's just a menu, but the tracks go on for several minutes. I don't know why Sonic Team made that decision since the average player doesn't spend time on a menu, but this is a game where you'll appreciate the music far better if you own the OST or listen to the music separately. Okay, before I reveal my number one favorite Sonic soundtrack of all time, let me list one honorable mention. There was a Sonic game that I really wanted to include in this list, but after careful analyses, I had to remove it. And that's Sonic Generations. This game is one of my favorite Sonic games, and I love the music as well. Some of its remixes are even better than the originals. I preferred Modern Rooftop Run soundtrack in Generations more than Unleashed, and Modern Crisis Cities music runs circles around the Sonic 06 version. However, I like Planet Wisp music more in colors than Generations. The absence of most of the relaxing piano music just felt wrong. Also, since I'm not a huge fan of the butt rock from the Venture days, a lot of that was in Generations, and even though I highly commend Generations for making me appreciate a lot of the music from the Dreamcast era, like City Escape, Speed Highway, and etc., I just couldn't bring myself to put this game on my list, because that would just be pretty biased and unfair of me to put this game soundtrack in my list and not SA1 or SA2, when some of the tracks are barely remixed like Speed Highway. Nevertheless, Ocean Palace's music from Sonic Heroes has always been one of my favorites from that era, and I like how it was remixed into Seaside Hills theme and Generations, but I still prefer listening to it by itself since it's so good. Anyway, the biggest compliment I can make about Sonic Generation soundtrack is that it made me appreciate all the tracks from multiple Sonic games throughout his history, and some I haven't even heard of yet. Jun Tanoa was the sole composer for this game, and he did a damn good job remixing as many tracks as he could. But that's the whole point of Generations. It's one big remix soundtrack, and well deserving of an honorable mention. Okay, time for the moment you've all been waiting for. My number one Sonic soundtrack ever is Sonic Forces. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Damn, this is so good! My number one is actually Sonic Mania. I adore this soundtrack and everything about it. This has to be the highest replay Sonic game on my list. For the music only. I've listened to the music more than I've played the actual game. There's just so much history behind this game and the people behind it that I have to give this its number one spot. Especially for the fact that the music composer for this game started off as a Sonic fan on YouTube. T. Lopez was the main composer and I remember back when he was just a small indie musician who remixed music from games on his YouTube channel, mostly from Sonic. I would always use his music for my videos and credit him back in 2012 and I knew that one day he would do something great. Five years later and he's working with Sega, making music for a Sonic game. Lopez was chosen for his task due to his popularity on YouTube for producing arrangements of various Sonic tracks and for his work on the Sonic 2 HD project. Lopez initially wanted his score to resemble the Sonic CD soundtrack, trying to imagine what a sequel to it might have sounded like. But as development progressed, he took inspiration from several other older Sonic and Sega games, such as The Revenge of Shinobi, Jet Set Radio, Cowboy Bebop, Sega Rally, 
Lopez also looked to popular music from the 1990s, such as the work of Michael Jackson, for further inspiration. One of the main reasons why Michael Jackson was never credited in Sonic 3 was because he wasn't really satisfied with the way his music sounded on the Sega Genesis. It didn't feel like it fully optimized his music the way he wanted it to. If only MJ was still alive today, he would love how his music has been represented well by T. Lopez and Sonic Mania. Funnily enough, Hydro City Zone's music is the only track in the game that has mostly been left untouched, just remastered. T. Lopez himself said that the track is already perfect and didn't need any remixing. As I stated earlier, the King of Pop wasn't the only artist whose music was in the game. T. Lopez also took inspiration from other artists in his music, like Press Garden's music being inspired by Stevie Wonder, or Stardust Speedway Act 1 taken from Janet Jackson's pop music. During a live stream, T. Lopez gave a full insight on how he developed the music of Sonic Mania and gave many more details on how he came up with music for the game as well as the many inspirations for the various tracks. To even talk about this game's masterful soundtrack it deserves its own video, but I will try to cover everything here. Act 2 of Green Hill Zone was made with Brazilians in mind and Samba based. Brazilians have been huge Sonic fans so he decided to dedicate Green Hill Zone Act 2 to them. And who can forget Act 2 of Chemical Plant? the best remix of Chemical Plant I've ever heard and even rivals the original. Even Jun Sanao couldn't top Chemical Plant in his generation's remix. Also the Metallic Madness remix was awesome as he provided his own raps for the track. And to the casual gamer they may sound nonsensical but if you listen real closely the lyrics have a meaning to it. Act 1 is Sonic's lyrics and Act 2 is Dr. Eggman's lyrics. Basically it's a rap battle between the two. T. Lopez is just a musical genius and the only sin of Mania was that there wasn't enough original stages for him to compose music for, and I really did not care for the music of Oil Ocean Zone. But believe it or not, his favorite music to compose was Titanic Monarch. Anyway, I'll stop gushing over this game soundtrack, but the amount of accolades it has received is evident. This game has won the People's Choice category in the IGN Awards for Best Original Music and was also nominated for Best Score and Soundtrack in the 2017 Game Awards. So a job well done to T. Lopez and I hope he continues to make music for Sega. He is a huge inspiration for me and all the up and coming artists out there to continue persevering with their music. And maybe one day you can work with a major company. Alright well that wraps it up for my top 5 Sonic soundtrack list. I hope you all enjoyed it and were also enlightened on a few things. I didn't just want to list my top 5 like some other people do without thoroughly explaining why and the history behind them. So I hope I did my part well. Now I want to hear what you guys think are the top 5 Sonic soundtracks. It can be from either console or handheld, doesn't matter. And be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell button and stay tuned for my next top 5 video which will be my top 5 Sonic games. But for now, take care and until next time, swag out.